Hello, and it's time to talk about the atmosphere. Isn't it such a wonderful and exciting topic? So, first thing we're going to talk about is energy in the atmosphere. Now, temperature fluctuates in the atmosphere um, due to the energy that comes in from the sun. The average amount of energy coming in and going out um, has to be equal if we want the global temperature to remain the same. But if temperature is increasing, um, global temperature is, that means more energy is coming in. But if more energy is going out, that means that the global temperature is going down. Um, this balance is also affected by greenhouse gases, which is currently what the world is seeing, um, though it's still a debate from some scientists. But greenhouse gases affect how warm the atmosphere will be. Clouds also reduce the energy in the atmosphere by reflecting it back into space and by also insulating the heat that is in already in the planet. Um, they keep the heat from um, kind of going up. Um, snow and ice also reflect the light back and help to keep the planet cool. <clears throat> so let's talk about the composition and properties, properties of the atmosphere. Um, the two biggest components of the atmosphere are actually nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen actually makes up more of the atmosphere than oxygen does. Um, but coming off of oxygen is ozone. Ozone is actually a compound of oxygen. It's uh, O3, I believe. And it helps to protect the world. Um, ozone is in the upper atmosphere and it absorbs high energy UV light, um, well, radiation coming in from the sun. So it protects. Um, things on the surface, the most harmful rays of the sun. That's why people always say you need to wear sunscreen, is because of the UV light. Well, the ozone layer is kind of like the sunscreen of the earth. Without the ozone layer, we all would be fried. We also have greenhouse gases, which give us um, more heat in the atmosphere. This can be good and bad. Sometimes it increases the temperature of the atmosphere and helps regulate it, but sometimes it gives us too much heat in the atmosphere and melts too much of like the polar ice caps. Um, but without greenhouse gases, the earth would be frigid at night and it would be scorching during the day. So the most important greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide, methane, water vapor, and ozone. There is also particles of dust, soil, fecal matter, metal, salt, smoke, ash, and other solids in the air. Um, you're going to get that anywhere. Uh, you know, you always have people that say, make sure you close the bathroom door, otherwise, you know, that stuff will get all over. It's all over anyway. Um, yeah, it's disgusting, really. Um, but the atmospheric um, composition is going to be the same no matter where you go in the atmosphere, um, percentages wise, for the most part. Um, and that's because the, the gas particles like to distribute themselves kind of equally. So while the air is getting thinner, the further up you go, um, there's still the same ratio. Which brings us to properties. Um, air density decreases with altitude. Um, and that's because there's less gravity to hold it there. Um, gravity is more in effect closer to the ground level. And this actually causes the gas to be weighed down upon the levels that are above it. Um, we already covered the composition part. And then we have cooler air equals higher air density and air pressure, while hotter air equals lower density and lower air pressure. And this is because cooler air is um, less energetic, 
So it's not going to move much, while hotter air moves more. Um, that's the reason why those properties are the way they are. <clears throat> Alright, so let's talk about the layers of the atmosphere. Um, I really liked this picture, but unfortunately, the way it came to me, it didn't come in a version that I could easily put on as its whole, so I had to split it into two. Um, so, the atmosphere actually goes up to 10,000 kilometers. Well, that's where we kind of ended it with the exosphere. Um, but most of the important processes of the atmosphere take place in the lowest two layers, the troposphere and the stratosphere. <clears throat> so let's talk about the troposphere. Um, the troposphere has higher temperatures near the surface of the Earth and they decrease with altitude. The average temperature gradient, so how the temperature is going to change as you go up and down in elevation, um, in the troposphere is 6.5 degrees Celsius per thousand meters. Um, the Earth's surface is a major source of heat for the troposphere. Although nearly all that heat comes from the sun, the rock, soil, and water of the Earth absorb the sunlight and radiate it back to the atmosphere's heat. The higher gravity causes the temperature to rise. Um, the warm air near the surface rises and then cools during um, the day. So this causes mixing. Um, this is why you have the temperature changes that we do, um, why temperatures kind of stay what we expect them to do. Um, sometimes there are temperature inversions where air temperature in the troposphere will increase with altitude and warm air sits over cold air instead. Inversions are very stable and may last several days or even weeks. Some examples of this are um, over land at night or in winter when the ground is cold. The cold ground cools the air that sits above it, making this low layer of air denser than the air above it. And then near coasts, when the cold seawater cools the air above it, um, when the denser air moves inland, it slides beneath the warmer air that it finds there. <clears throat> Alright, let's move on to the stratosphere. So the stratosphere is about 10 kilometers to 45 kilometers. And that's where ash and gas from large volcanic eruptions um, often get trapped. And they can stay there for years um, because there is very little mixing between layers of the atmosphere. Pilots tend to fly in the lower sections of the stratosphere because there's less turbulence there. Uh, the temperature increases with altitude and the direct source of heat for the stratosphere is actually the sun. Um, the air in the stratosphere is stable because warmer, less dense air sits over cooler, dense air. As a result, there's little mixing within the layer. It doesn't change much. It's like having oil between, um, you know, water than oil and then something that's less dense than oil, which I don't know off the top of my head. Um, and then the ozone layer is also found within the stratosphere. It's between 15 kilometers and 30 kilometers. Let's move to the mesosphere. The mesosphere is 45 kilometers to 85 kilometers. The temperatures in the mesosphere um, decrease with altitude. There are fewer gas molecules in the mesosphere to absorb the sun's radiation. The heat source in the stratosphere is the stratosphere below. <clears throat> the mesosphere is extremely cold about negative 90 degrees Celsius or negative 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, meteors burn up in the mesosphere um, even though the gas is very thin and this is where we actually get our shooting stars from. Which I think is pretty cool. Then we have the thermosphere is 85 kilometers to about 1000 kilometers. Um, and this is where the International Space Station orbits, actually. Um, it stays within 
about 320 to 380 kilometers. Um, the density is low, so low that one gas molecule can go about a kilometer before it collides with another molecule. Um, the air is very, very cold here. And that's because these gas molecules are so far apart. The ionosphere is within the thermosphere. The ionosphere gets its name from the solar radiation that, that, that ionizes gas molecules. And at night, um, radio waves actually bounces, bounce off the ionosphere and back to Earth. This is why you often pick up AM radio stations far away from the source at night. And then we also have the Van Halen radiation belts. And these are two donut-shaped zones of highly charged particles that are located beyond the atmosphere in the magnetosphere, which is still within the thermosphere. Um, but this is, um, these are extremely dangerous. You don't want to go through one of these. It grabs cosmic radiation. It grabs solar radiation. Um, these things aren't good. Um, the particles originate in solar flares and fly to Earth on the solar wind. When massive solar storms cause the Van Halen belts to become overloaded with particles, the result is the most spectacular form of spectacular feature in the ionosphere, the nighttime auroras, otherwise known as the aurora borealis. Um, but these are also very dangerous. You would not want to pass through these as a human being. Um, so, yeah. Eh. Well, it's not so nice. And then we have the exosphere and beyond. That number's wrong. Gotta fix that. It's actually 1,000 kilometers and up. Um, <clears throat> there's no really outer limit of the exosphere. Um, the outermost limit is basically wherever scientists said, no more. Um, but the gas molecules become so scarce that there really aren't any more. Um, and that's because, you know, space, vacuum, kind of just sucks things out. Um, but beyond the exosphere, cosmic objects are subjugated to solar winds. The solar wind is made of high-speed particles, mostly protons and electrons, and they are traveling rapidly outward from the sun. You don't want to be hit by a solar wind. They are extremely dangerous, and they are not good for the human body. The fact that we have um, a magnetosphere, we have an atmosphere, is very important. The solar winds would tear us apart if we didn't have that. The solar winds are actually why some of the planets don't have an atmosphere. They tore it away. Um, so it's very, very dangerous in that respect. And that's pretty much it. For the video today if you have any questions I can try my best to answer um, I do know a little bit more about um, astronomy but I'm concentrating more on how this relates directly to earth than um, to the solar system at large so hope you guys have a good day